Hello and welcome to Dynamic Community Service Projects, a Lions University course brought to you by the USA Canada Lions Leadership Forum. My name is Past District Governor Wendy Kane, and I will be helping to facilitate and be the administrator behind the scenes for this topic, even though you're the bottom of your screen, probably still says Mark Miller. So uh, again, my name is Wendy Kane, and I am glad to be with you. I would like to remind you that this webinar is being recorded for those who cannot participate with us live, or if you would like to review the material again at a later time. We will have a couple of opportunities for you to participate in this webinar um, by either responding or asking questions in the questions pane. You can type those in, or if you have anything that you would like to share verbally, you can raise your hand and we will call upon uh, Lions to unmute and then you'll be able to, to share verbally with us and then we'll um, continue on from there. So we look forward to your participation in tonight's webinar. Dynamic Community Service Projects is course number 105, a required course for the Lions University Bachelor's Program that's designed to help Lions lead at the club level. The bachelor's program involves the completion of the 10 required courses that are shown on the left of your screen and at least five of the elective courses from the right side of your screen. And thank you all for your flexibility in working with us as we had a, a change in our course scheduling this evening. I'd like to remind you about the lionsuniversity.org website and in particular the program page slide where you can see all of the courses that are currently available or scheduled uh, by going to the, the appropriate program summary, summary page. The bachelor's program is shown on this slide and we have a, a similar page for the master's program and then later this summer we'll be adding the details for the doctorate program. If you've not already done so, you will need to register for an account on lionsuniversity.org in order to access the available courses, take quizzes, and track your progress real time. This requires a different username and password than those who have registered at the members.lionsforum.org website. However, you could choose to use the same if you wish. After participating in a webinar or watching a course video, you simply select the Mark as Completed button at the bottom of the course page, and the link to the quiz module will appear. You can select a, the, uh, there'll be another button that says Next Unit, and if you do that, it will advance you to the quiz. You can monitor your own co course completions by selecting My Account, and then selecting either the My Bachelor's Program Courses or My Master's Program Courses. When you've completed a phase of the program, such as all required courses, at least five electives, or the required experience, then you can select Apply for Program Credit and select the appropriate phase. Once you complete the relevant information, we will verify that and update your profile on the Lions Forum website. You can log into your member's account at lionsforum.org. If you do not already have an account here, you can simply select Activate Membership and either select the Lions University Student, which is free for anyone to participate, or the appropriate registration if you will be um, attending the USA Canada Lions Leadership Forum, then that will automatically sign you up as a Lions University student. Inside that profile, you can see the courses that you may have completed prior to March 1st when we um, changed our, our system for progress. Uh, we'll maintain those records for those of you that completed quizzes and courses prior to that time, as well as now focusing on the key summary requirements for each program. And those are the ones that are highlighted with the, the red brackets. And I hope those of you that are participating in our courses are um, considering, if you've not already registered for the forum in Grand Rapids in September, we hope you will consider doing that. Um, 
for the Lions that are able to complete all of the requirements of either the bachelor's or master's programs this year before September. We will have an exciting um, photo opportunity with the international president as well as a, um, a few comments and remarks for a graduation ceremony that will be held on the Friday of the forum at the Amway Grand Hotel and there'll be more information coming out through our Lions University correspondence but we hope uh, that you will be able to join us for that celebration. It is now my pleasure to introduce you to our faculty team for this topic and I'm really excited about the collaboration that we have had with um, this topic on dynamic community service projects because these lines I've had an opportunity to know for for several years and they all not only have very much a heart for service and service projects but their clubs also have some some very unique activities that they perform for service projects and so I'm excited to to hear their perspectives and have them share that with you um, as well as with all of us and we're also looking forward to getting information and feedback on the unique projects that your clubs are carrying out. So we're going to to go through this order. I would like to introduce uh, District Governor-elect Michael Gibbs from Multiple District 13, Vice District Governor A.J. Westland also from Multiple District 13, and Lion Don Rice Norton from Multiple District 33. And with that, I will ask uh, Lion Michael to take it away. Hey, thank you, Lion Wendy. Uh, hello, everyone. And our objectives for tonight are to define the characteristics of dynamic community service projects, to identify the sources of ideas and other resources for service projects, and to share examples of effective community service projects. So as we ponder the characteristics of a dynamic service project tonight, I'd like to dispel a couple of myths that I have encountered in my interaction with Lions and my travels all over Canada and the United States. The number one myth is, though fundraisers may be raising funds to accomplish service, they themselves are not normally service projects, as their main objective is to raise funds. A service project's main objective is to provide a needed service. So when you think of it, if you think fund, fundraiser, and service project is service. So uh, the number two myth is a service project does not have to be a big, all-encompassing, huge project that includes the whole club. Sometimes an excellent service project might be a small and just include a couple of members of your club, and uh, such as they may go and go to the school and read to the school children or something of that nature. Our motto is we serve. All Lions want the opportunity to make a difference. However, to be successful in their service projects, they must first of all be meeting a need. Because without a need, there is no reason to do the service. They must be organized, and they must have the tools for the job. A dynamic service project will be interesting and rewarding to the participating Lions and will be welcomed by those you are doing the service for. Next slide, please. The community needs assessment is uh, available in the Club Excellence Process area on the Lions Club International website. It is invaluable in learning what service might be needed in your community. And my, myself, have uh, used that with several clubs and it's amazing the things you will find out about your community that you did not know. I'm also a huge advocate of visiting other clubs. I have never visited another Lions Club where I did not come away with an idea that was different than project my own home club does. Zone meetings are also an excellent place to discover ideas for a service project your club might do to benefit your community. Don't be afraid to ask a club how they do a service project you're interested in, as you might be able to avoid a lot of pitfalls, learning from the wisdom of their experiences. 
There is nothing keeping your club from partnering with other clubs or other organizations in your community to provide a needed service. Sometimes we cannot meet a need alone because we're too small or we don't have the resources. But by partnering with another organization, we expose others to lionism and we get the added resources to meet the needs of that service project. Of course, the Lions Club International website has many project ideas. I'm not going to read all of these um, ideas and resources, but they're all available by going to the uh, link on the screen there, members.lionsclub.org forward slash en forward slash serve. One of the greatest things about our Lions is our willingness to serve and help one another. I'm sure all of you have at least one project you know of that is unique to your area and your club. I would invite you to please share that interesting service project on the message board at the close of this webinar. The message board is at lionsforum.org forward slash boards. Scroll down to class 105 and share your great ideas for service projects. That address again is lionsforum.org forward slash boards. Now that you have an idea of what makes a service project, we have a challenge for all lions to serve over 100 million people by June 2018, with 25 million people served in each of the areas listed on your screen. We are currently at over 32 million people served. You have your dynamic service project successfully completed. You have done your part to meet the challenge. You must ensure that your club secretary reports the service project on my LCI in one of the four core areas of the Centennial Challenge. In my district, a lot of very successful projects go unreported, and those clubs will not get recognized for their hard work because LCI is providing a banner patch with one, two, three, or four gemstones on it for each club who does at least one service project in one, two, three, or four of the four Centennial Challenge areas. Shown on the right of this slide is the four diamond patch you would receive for meeting all four areas of the Centennial Challenge. Ever since Helen Keller challenged Lions to be Knights of the Blind, at the International Convention in Cedar Point, Ohio, on June 30th, 1925, Lions have rallied around service projects that fight blindness. Listed on this slide are just a few of the many um, site projects that Lions in the USA are very familiar with. If you have other site-related projects, please share them on the message boards. And that address was lionsforum.org forward slash boards. The 1.4 million lions worldwide do so many other service projects other than site related projects. Here to tell us some more about these many other projects is Lion AJ Westland. Without further ado, take it away AJ. Thank you Lion Michael. Um, hopefully everybody's having a good day today. Uh, one of the projects that we're going to be talking about is uh, our hearing projects, and that's helping out with either setting up hearing screenings or uh, using the resources that are available on lionsclubs.org uh, for the hearing aid recycling that can take place. Uh, so when you're doing your community uh, awareness program, you can uh, figure out if this is a need where your lions can serve. Uh, the Diabetes Project, um, many of you are probably familiar with the STRIDES, which is the Lions for Diabetes Awareness. Uh, there are a number of awareness presentations and actually STRIDE walks, which uh, 
you know, help raise awareness, but also, you know, the, the funds needed uh, to, you know, help out with the diabetes research. Uh, there's also uh, partnerships uh, that help out with screenings, uh, and there is the uh, LCIF core grant uh, that is part of the uh, diabetes projects as we go through. So if you guys, as Lyon Michaels talked about uh, in the forum, uh, if there are other diabetes projects that you guys are taking part of that aren't listed, please list them on the forum page and keep that discussion going. Now we get into the fun part of what I, what I personally believe is the fun part. Uh, we've got uh, the children and youth projects, you know, so either figuring out services for children uh, here in central Ohio uh, the Lions Club that is closest to the Ohio State School for the Blind uh, every Christmas holds a service project uh, where they give out presents to each of the students at the School for the Blind. Um, they partner with the uh, OS, the Ohio State School for the Blind Leo Club. Uh, we also have uh, here in Ohio uh, Camp Echoing Hills, with the, which is a youth camp uh, which allows children uh, with developmental disabilities and other developmental challenges to enjoy a summer camp program. Uh, the youth exchanges and uh, being scout mentors. Uh, uh, in the questions area, it says that uh, Line Frank is mentioned in District uh, N4, they do a diabetes cavalcade, so thank you for listing that. If you guys have other ideas or other projects that go along with the children, again, list them in the forum. Uh, my area of expertise in Lions uh, is my background with disasters. I've, I've served on every major national disaster since Hurricane Andrew in 1991. So when I was asked on the district level to run the Lions Alert program, that was a, a, an easy fix for me. Uh, so. With the Lions Alert, if you don't know, this is the disaster wing of Lions. Uh, this is uh, what we're focusing here in Central Ohio, is as you see on this logo, uh, being a force of nature in your hometown by planning, preparing, and then practicing your plan so that should something happen, it's not this, oh, what do we do? It's now here's how we handle this. So, you know, if you need more information on the Lions Alert, you can go to the Lions Alert link on the lionsclub.org website, uh, but you can also, you know, you know, if you need more information, please follow up in the forum or shoot me an email, and uh, I'm glad to talk about Lions Alert in much more depth. I could probably do an entire webinar on that, but uh, unfortunately, we don't have time uh, tonight to do that. So. Um, the global outreach, uh, this is where we talk about making sure that, you know, as not only Lions serving here in the U.S. and Canada, but also Lions serving throughout the world. And the club twinning program is very nice. Uh, when I first became a Lion uh, in 2007, uh, one of our projects was the club twinning project with a club that was in uh, China. And uh, we still talk with them quite a bit. Uh, they're, they're over in Hong Kong and uh, we do different projects with them via the internet and uh, you know we let them know what's going on with us, they let us know what's going on with them. So you know it's the club twinning. Uh, the international relations, uh, just making sure that you know people realize that we're not only serving here in the USA and Canada but we're also serving throughout the world. You know that's how we have the 1.4 million members. So it's local service, but there's the global impact. Going back to the Lions Alert, when they had the disasters in Nepal, and you know, within a few hours they had not only the grant money, but they also had rallied some of the people that had equipment and things through Lions Alert that were able to help out in Nepal with those disasters. And I believe that's it for my section. 
Um, so now I get to turn it over to uh, Lion Dawn, uh, and she's going to uh, speak to us about uh, our environmental area. So uh, Lion Dawn, if uh, you are ready, uh, let's hear about some green projects. Thank you, Lion AJ. Um, planning environmental projects is a great way to get the entire community involved in your service activity. Um, organizing hands-on projects that protect the environment for a cleaner, healthier, brighter future is uh, obviously pretty good for all of us. Um, here are some ideas here for uh, projects, uh, uh, recycling, including some electronics, environmental education, maybe plan a community cleanup, a tree, tree planting, um, and the Lions Green Team uh, resources online at LCI are pretty extensive. Uh, there's a brochure, there's certificates, there's little stickers, there's um, all kinds of resources um, for environmental projects. The pictures you see here, um, there's one here with um, a bunch of frozen two-liter bottles. That's a project that our club did, and it came as a result of our community needs assessment uh, where the community farm was uh, planning a, a really unique and innovative way to establish a root cellar at their community farm so that they could preserve their um, produce to be donated locally to a shelter and, a, uh, and the food pantries. And the project included freezing several hundred two-liter bottles that we donated from our collection and um, placing them in one, one room of the uh, cellar and then having a really low energy set up with a fan to blow the cool area over into the root cellar. So it was a really, really unique project that we never would have thought of. But um, as I said, as part of our community needs assessment, we found out from the farm that they were trying to um, pull off this project. Um, we also donated some money for them to be able to um, add some wood and, and some um, you know restructuring of the uh, root cellar to be able to carry this off, but it was a great collaborative project between our Lions Club, the community farm, and a local engineering college, Olin College. And um, it was really, it was one of the out of the box things, biggest out of the box things we've done. It was very, very unique, very interesting. Um, you can also plant trees, PIP Pam, Tam um, started this during his reign, and um, Every tree planted by a lion is, is part of a large-scale effort by members all around the world to make a significant impact on our environment. <clears throat> you can go to the next one if you like. Um, now this is a project, this, this group of projects is near and dear to my heart, uh, literacy projects. Um, our, our club, you can see this author, um, Michelle Nelson Schmidt, uh, we were able to sponsor her uh, visiting the schools and provide an autographed book to each of the classrooms that she uh, spoke to. And we were able to, um, again, a nice collaborative project with Usborne Children's Books and the local PTO and the Lions Club. Um, it, we were able to um, provide all these books at a decent cost. Um, you also see a picture of a another Osborne book, which we um, inserted some Braille in. Um, you know, don't be shy. Approach um, like Osborne. I know that um, the um, um, some of the other partnerships that we have with Riff Reading is fundamental, and and also. Um, other book publishing companies will uh, work with you to help make it to help you leverage your resources to be able to provide books and resources to libraries, schools, um, groups at a reasonable cost. Osborne's program is called Literacy for a Lifetime. I believe Scholastic Books also offers uh, some special pricing for nonprofits. But um, you know, don't be afraid to ask if if they have such a thing, and um, you know, work out a nice collaborative effort. Um, some of the reading action programs here suggested by LCI: uh, be a volunteer reader, support a book drive, um, help with some educational um, programs in your schools, and again, as I said, the Braille literacy in our district. We have a very active Braille literacy com uh, committee, and uh, work very closely with a local Braille. Braille Publishing Company, National Braille Press, where we actually go in and assemble the Braille books. And um, it's just such a unique thing to be able to do. Um, it's just wonderful. Um, also in Canada, 
um, the Canadian Literacy and Learning Network and the Excellence in Literacy Foundation are also partnering with Lions there. Um, and uh, for the blind, you have the Canadian Federation of the Blind, which will also help out um, and partner with uh, Lions on uh, with the issue of Braille literacy in um, Canada. And uh, I think we can go to the next one. Blind on, I just wanted to uh, yes. highlight that uh, Lion Susan shared in the questions pane that uh, her club did have a partnership with Scholastic in doing something similar yes. and also with Barnes & Noble. So for others who may be interested, um, definitely your your reference to Osborne, um, but also the, the plug in there for Scholastic. So thank you, yeah, Lion Susan. Many of them will, and, and you know, it's just simply asking, just like you'd ask somebody to be a lion, you know, at, approach publishing companies, local bookstores, you know, they, they have funds, most of them set aside to be able to do some of these charitable, pro charitable projects, even though they may not be able to carry them out themselves. They're very willing to help you with, with the resources um, so that even a, a smallish kind of club could um, carry off a very um, impactful project. Also one thing we've done here is participate in Community Reading Day and actually um, when I do that I tend to bring a Braille print book so that not only do they hear the story they get to have some exposure to Braille and touch the Braille and it just is uh, you know it's a great you know multi multifaceted uh, service project. Yep. Um, another area of the 10 areas that LCI has resources for are contest projects. And half of this is um, contest projects for uh, children. And um, you see some pictures here. Um, one of the contests that LCI has significant resources for is the uh, Peace Poster Contest. Um, the, the contests for youth really give the clubs the opportunity to interact with uh, young people in their communities to introduce youth to international understanding and uh, really give them an opportunity to create some positive PR for their local clubs. And you see here a tabletop peace poster exhibit and this you can borrow from um, LCI. It's free of charge, they ship it out. Uh, generally you get it for a week or so and then you ship it back and they, they pay shipping in either direction. Um, you you um, it, Unfortunately because of customs regulations, it can't go outside the U.S., but um, it's really a great uh, exhibit to put in your schools or a local library, and it really um, illustrates, uh, you can see the beautiful posters here, and it really gives a great idea for the, um, the kids that will be preparing the peace posters. There's also a lot of um, resources on LCI about the peace poster contest, how to run one. Uh, your club can order a peace poster packet quite early in the year. You can order them now for next year because it occurs early in the fall. I, the second half of this is the um, essay contest and that is for the visually impaired to, to it, it was created to offer um, an opportunity for the visually impaired to express their feelings of peace. Um, students that, who are visually impaired in ages 11, 12, and 13 are eligible. And both these contests offer a grand prize of uh, $5,000 and a very nice award. So um, it's, um, it's a great project. The topic for 2015-16 will be share peace. Um, additionally, your districts may have other uh, contests for youth that you may want to run that, that um, really capture and enhance the creative or unique aspects of your own community, um, like a patriotic or other type contest. And just with the LCI contest, these give the opportunity for the clubs to interact and create um, positive PR and relations between the community, the schools, the youth groups. Um, the other picture you see here with um, Vice Pre International Vice President Yamada, those are our youth speech contestants. In our multiple district 33, we have a youth speech contest which progresses from club to multiple district level and winning prize money along the way with an overall prize at the uh, state convention of $1,500. Um, and we have considerable resources online for anybody, any district or multiple district uh, looking to run one of these. We have our own website where we have um, all the nuts and bolts of running one, all our forms, all the rules, and that's at www.lionsyouthspeech.com.
speech.org. So lionsyouthspeech.org. Um, and I'm sure we can get that into the um, discussion board as well. Um, it's uh, it's a great prog pro yeah it's a great project. Uh, it uh, really meets a need. Each year there's a specific topic. Um, this past year was um, respect. Where has it gone? Next year is how has social media changed society? So they all speak on the same topic, and it's it's just incredible what these kids do. So I think we can go. Yep. There are also contest projects for Lions to get involved with, one of which is the environmental photo contest. And it, it really provides a way for Lions to portray through an original photo of their own um, their pride and commitment to uh, improving, protecting, and preserving the environment. And any Lion from a club in good standing can enter a photograph of your immediate surroundings. Uh, into the club level and you progress up through again like the other contests there's several categories animal life uh, plant life uh, urban or natural landscape a weather phenomenon and each year there's a special theme um, this year's being lion's pride in our environment and all these photo the winning photos uh, are placed into a calendar which is then sold for a nominal cost uh, it's like five dollars and that money goes to um, Lions environmental programs. There's also, um, and that's on the international level, there's a couple other international level contests that clubs can progress up through and enter their newsletter or their website in contests. And again, all this information is on the LCI website in the uh, member section um, if you need some more information. Another area of projects are the community outreach projects. And these are hands-on community service projects and service activities which focus on the civic, uh, cultural, social, and moral welfare of your specific community. Um, and you can collaborate, again, with other uh, service organizations in town or um, in your specific state. Um, one of the cl clubs in our multiple district, the Abington Lions Club, even went so far as to have a service group dinner meeting. And they invited representatives from every benevolent and charitable service group in town, the, the scouts, uh, boosters, police, fire, and EMS support groups, schools, etc. They each gave a brief, uh, you know, three to five minute talk about who they were, what they do, and what upcoming events they had. And they brainstormed how to support each other. And this same group, through this collaboration, um, were able to collect a million pennies for their local library computer project. And it was so impressive that LCI came out and filmed um, some of their projects and documented. And it, it really was very cool. It, you know, it was like the, the, the epitome of, of working together. And, um, you know, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You can, you can, um, you know, collaborate with others and really get a great, a great, a sense of community, and certainly multiply your efforts. Um, and uh, it really came off well. And again, I can't um, overstress the community needs assessment. And 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 when we were discussing this earlier, I, I admitted that I really wasn't um, initially much a fan of doing the community needs assessment. But many of our projects, and as Lion Michael um, expressed, uh, some of their projects. Come up, came out of their community needs assessment. And LCI really suggests that the clubs should assess their programs and services that they provide to their uh, local community um, annually. Um, and through, through the simple assessment, you, you really get a good understanding of what kind of volunteer service your community needs, what uh, projects and programs are important to the people in your area, and whether your club's current service projects are still needed by the community. Also, it gives you a great idea if other organizations in your area are providing similar services so that, one, you don't duplicate or, you know, cause hard feelings stuck on toes, or you could collaborate again. Some of the, some of the, air, the uh, groups you would assess are schools, the parks, police or fire, library, environmental services, senior center, maybe medical facilities. Um, also, uh, lost my slide here. Um, and other uh, projects that you can um, 
work on in the community are Alliance Crew projects. There's Alliance Crew project which is um, collaborating with Habitat for Humanity and they're building a house as in one of our areas of our multiple district. Um, some of the community culture projects you can consider are arts or food, sports, dance, recreation, maybe a family fun day, um, band concerts and fireworks or some sort of book and clothing drive, something that really benefits your unique area. And the only way to really do that is to take a really good look at your area. And again, the community needs assessment will uh, do that for you. Also, in our district events, um, each of our advisories, a service element was included, either a book collection, a blank collection, a coat drive, a food drive, um, a collection of gift cards for teens at the holidays. So again, even a small club can collaborate with other clubs within your, your district or multiple district and also collaborate with your uh, variety of community um, organizations and really take, take off with your service projects. Um, I, think, I think that's all for me right now. It is. I would like to uh, take a moment and thank uh, Lions, Michael, AJ, and Don. And um, uh, just as a highlight, the bullets for each of the service areas that were discussed all have specific resources that LCI has available to help your clubs um, at the website that's listed on the handout. And I think several of the other websites that um, were mentioned from Lion Michael and Lion Dawn, we will include on the list of supplementary materials. So we'll have direct links available there uh, after the webinar. But all of these items are ones that there were resources available, publications and guides from LCI to help our clubs serve. Uh, we did have several folks who had put service project ideas in the questions pane and I'd like to take a moment and highlight those and I'd also like to open up the, f the floor or the webinar for input from other participants who might have unique projects in each of the, the 10 areas that are reflected um, on the screen or in other unique service project ideas. So a couple of quick highlights. Lion Kathy from Iowa indicated that she is the State Leo Chair and was working on a program to help make the youth aware of human tra trafficking since that's the age that they target and the Leos will help sponsor this in their schools working with the police and authorities um, and dealing with this very risky and nasty business. So um, great Great idea, Lion Kathy. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, Lion Kathy also had a, a second uh, project that she shared that they had hosted their first, quote, Proud to Be Me symposium last fall and are planning a second one in a different part of the district um, geared towards 11 to 17 year old girls and um, their trusted adults to help show the ways of communicating personal self esteem development anti-bullying, coping with stress, and much more. So thank you for sharing those two youth-related um, service projects. Let me scroll down through here. Lion Susan had shared a couple of items. Let's see, they collect books, DVDs, and CDs to um, send to soldiers as part of a, I think, a Books for Soldiers program, it appears, because that's capitalized, um, but that looks like it's something that provides other um, entertainment and uh, just leisure time for, for this, the troops. And for a youth program, Lion Susan also shared that they have a student speaker contest uh, for high school students to, that can make it, wow, make it through different levels with cash prizes up to or over $40,000. So that's a, that's a serious contest. Thank you, Lion Susan. Um, Lion Wendy. Yes. Um, wanted to make a, I think we skipped over a Lion Barb. She says that they collect uh, gently used books and donate them to the food bank so that every hamper that goes out with food has a book for them as well. And I know that's a project that we work with similarly here in Central Ohio as well. Great, thank you very much for, for catching Lion Barb's contribution. And I would like to ask you you all, um, again, we've got the reference set up on the 
discussion forum and these are a lot of great ideas I can certainly take some of these and cut and paste them in but then it really looks like I'm just having a conversation with myself so um, I know many of your names look familiar and that you have um, you've registered to use the Lions discussion forum um, it would really help because you're the authorities on how your club carries out these different activities if someone has a question that they might be interested in implementing so um, if you can, please help share these uh, on that site for others to maybe be inspired for additional service. Lion Leanne shared um, a program flags for first graders and they present a small flag on a wooden base with the Lions Club name on it with a little history about the flag and um, make a, a special presentation to first graders in their area. And so that's a very neat project. Thank you, Lion Leanne. Uh, Lion Bud shared an environment related projects and his club takes care of a small park near a river bridge and um, they painted painted a mural on a retaining wall um, dressed up the area with a flower box and it looks like just general maintenance and making sure that it looks uh, that it looks nice for the community uh, you guys are rolling in with with lots of examples here. Uh, let me check and see. You, uh, Lion Sharon raised her hand, so I'm going to unmute you, Lion Sharon, while we look at uh, the other items that are in the questions pane. You're unmuted, Lion Sharon. Okay, she may have not not wanted to speak I do if anyone would like to share verbally you can raise your hand which um, means the the arrow you the arrow should be pointing up if you want to raise your hand to go up um, press the button with the up arrow and that'll raise your hand and we'll we'll call on you uh, Lion Sharon did type something in the questions pane a trashy fashion show that sounds like more details are warranted in the uh, in the discussion forum I and Shelly shared a signature project that they have in a District A4, a Blind Anglers International Tournament, where uh, blind anglers are matched with shepherds and professional anglers for a weekend of fishing and competition. One of the other things that I noted is, is we were going through, um, I think, one of the youth projects related to summer camps. I know many multiple districts have different types of youth camps and again this is an area where I think if we share that with each other there might be an opportunity for different camp programming ideas to be be shared amongst the the different multiple districts or you know perhaps a, a multiple or a district that is interested in starting a camp but doesn't quite know what they would do with youth for a week um, or different durations that, that some of the camps offer um, is a great opportunity for us to help collaborate with one another. Uh, let me see. Lion Sharon, I'm going to come back to you with your hand raised. Lion Sharon? We cannot hear you. So maybe there is an issue with your microphone. You want to try again, Line Sharon? Okay, I'm going to keep reading. We got a few more ideas that uh, that you all have shared with us here. Lion Deb Club did the club excellence process, and the community needs assessment as part of that. And it looks like the the Millis Lions Club had a um, a service project that came out of that they brought in Chris Heron a former NBA star and recovering heroin addict to speak to the community um, both you know, adults and youth in the community focus on that and um, included some of the different support services that were available in the community such as AA NA and Al-Anon so great awareness and education program thank you Lion Dawn for sharing that uh, Lion Ollie shared a her club has a dash for diabetes 5k run and walk in the fall and use those funds to help with diabetes education and help aid community members that have diabetes Lion Wendy uh, yes. did you read the one uh, I'll read the one from Betty Ann okay. uh, Lion Betty Ann 
Uh, it says, our club is doing a suitcase for kids project where we have partnered with a corporate sponsor so that every child has a new case and stuff when they are uh, um, have to be, you know, in, in foster care and then sent to a new home. So that's uh, that's a pretty neat project for that area. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, AJ. If you want to help me rotate down through here, then they don't have to just listen to me rattle some off. Um, I will cover Lion Nancy's club has a Christmas in July that her club sponsors and leftover toys are donated to the local church um, for Christmas time. So that's a, a neat idea. Then uh, Lion Zane wrote in that they have a little free libraries and place them in areas where children play and then they continually restock them. And uh, that sounds like a really good project and something that, you know, is something that a lot of other people could probably help out with. Indeed, Lion Judy over in Nevada shared uh, two different camps that they have for youth um, that are either underprivileged in the 9 to 11 year old range. The camps are for uh, one week in duration. One is fully volunteered and one or by volunteers and one has a, a mix of, of paid staff and volunteers. So I do. I think there are a lot of different configurations that are multiple districts um, or districts around the, the U.S. and Canada have for camp programs that um, I think would be a really great kind of brainstorming or networking opportunity for for our Lions. And then uh, Lion Frank listed that District uh, N3 and N4 in Newfoundland have a camp for people with special needs. It's a year-round camp, but mostly used in the summer season. It's pretty neat that it goes year round. Yep, that's for sure. Uh, Lion Susan shares a guess you guys are doing great. Um, the you know a lot of folks think around between Thanksgiving and Christmas to donate food to the food banks, and in fact, December and January, if I remember right, that's our relieving the hunger. Um, Centennial Service campaign, um, but a lot of that interest wanes after the first of the year. And so Susan mentioned that her club held a food drive in January that um, that helped raise, you know, bring in a lot of food and help raise some funds um, after that interest has, has kind of gone away from the general public in supporting food banks. Right. Uh, Ryan, Wendy, I think yep. um, uh, another aspect of service projects and, and providing them is obviously documenting them um, when you do your monthly reports and um, allowing these projects to be searchable by other clubs provides another resource that uh, clubs can use to see what other clubs have done. Um, all these, these projects here that we're looking at and people are writing in about are, are very interesting and very unique to their area but could be created potentially um, in another area uh, around our USA and Canada um, or even worldwide and um, it's nice when you um, put in your monthly reports if you do um, leave that option checked so that it can be shared with others uh, it really gives an opportunity for for clubs to get some great ideas just as we're sharing here just as the discussion forum will share um, online reporting will also allow that to be shared. That's um, and again, you really want the credit for your club as well. Not that you do it for the credit, but it, it's great, especially in view of the Centennial Service Challenge, to um, really document what all the great things that all these clubs are doing. That's a great point, and, and like Michael shared at the beginning, um, the during the Centennial Service Challenge about you know encouraging clubs to register their projects on the my LCI with their monthly um, activities reports but even if your service projects are not in one of those four campaign areas it really is important to to document those one for a history for your club um, but also for the ability to share that with others so um, thank you for for coming back and reinforcing that um, Lion Wendy could I read another one from Lion Amy please do it says, uh, our Leo club is 75% students who are blind and or visually impaired, and they have a fully inclusive to students with disabilities. So the Leos have uh, actively advocated disability awareness with the University of Michigan community by participating in panel discussion and TED Talks. Um, 
They also partner with the Delta Gamma Sorority to stuff backpacks with foods and supplies for students who are uh, homeless within their district. Very cool. Thank you. Thank you. Some great, great projects. We have a couple more that folks have, have put in that I'm a little bit behind on. Let's see. We have um, Lion Susan shared collecting books for the women's shelter since a lot of times when um, women and their children need to leave home quickly, they don't get to take much with them. Uh, a lot of times the, the necessities and toiletries may be, um, you know, there's obviously needs for those as well, but sometimes just something for the children to have of their own and to help occupy them. Uh, great, great project there. Let's see. Uh, looks like uh, line Gary Steele uh, was talking about the lines in North Carolina. I've partnered with the University of North Carolina to put together a diabetes support group network. So sharing the wisdom amongst uh, all of the lines in North Carolina with you know setting up that support group. That's pretty good. Yeah, very cool. Um, Lion Lorraine shared a. Um, summer camp program for adults, for visual, visually impaired adults to come together for a, a week of vacation with a variety of physical and social activities. So um, that's a, a neat program. I, we've been focused on camps for, for youth, and so thank you for sharing that, Lion Lorraine. Uh, Lion, um, like Lion Kathy, uh, sorry if I jumped in nope, there. Go ahead. Uh, was uh, make that their Leos are making blankets and quilts for children in crisis, and they're collecting hygiene supplies for the high school nurse to pass out to those that are in need. So that's definitely engaging the youth. I hope you guys are as inspired by all these other Lions Club projects as I am. I'm going to have to go to my next club meeting and, and tell my club to get a move on because some of these are, are really exciting and I know there is is you know, there are similar needs in, in our community and, and it's time for us to probably refresh our community needs assessment as well. Um, one more, Lion Susan shared, um, per, they were able to participate in a pilot project for Lions called Lions Eyes Across California. And let's see, in Santa Monica, they collected over 1,000 pair of glasses, screened almost 80 people, gave away over 100 eyeglasses, and found three potential new members. So I like the Lions Eyes Across Canada. That may be something that uh, we can Google going forward and see if that's something that our, our multiple districts or states might want to, to jump in with. One that just came in from Line Judy is uh, my club is a twinning club in Australia, and we have been uh, escorting visiting lions from international to USA, showing the Toys for Smiles, the Lions Burn Center, and uh, visiting clubs. So, uh, working with that club twinning project that we were talking about earlier. Yeah, thank you, Lion Judy, for sharing that because we we hadn't had as many examples of the global outreach, and I think as as Lion AJ pointed out in that section, that that really is something that you know we think globally that doesn't just happen for our international association, but it's something that each of our clubs can be a part of. Uh, so thanks for sharing those examples. And your your typing has slowed down, so we're going to uh, to con continue on with the wrap up of this webinar. And that brings me to, like, we need one more plug for the discussion board that you can get to. I think Lion Michael earlier gave us the, the direct address. The easier or shorter one to remember is just go to lionsforum.org and click the link for discussion boards. Uh, but if you're also on the Lions University website, uh, there is a link for this particular course page that will take you right to the Dynamic Community Service Projects thread on the forum um, on the discussion board. So um, please do continue to, to share these ideas with one another and, and serve as a resource to, to help all of us better carry out our We Serve motto. Let's see how we did with our objectives today. I think we did well. We've got, we've got our characteristics of dynamic community service projects. There are many, many sources that are available to us for ideas for different projects as well as resources to help us carry them out. Um, the, again, the, the items that were highlighted, particularly in the bullet points for the, these slides are all 
items that LCI has resources available to us and we had lots and lots of examples for effective community service projects. So I would like to, to take a moment again and just personally thank Lions Michael and AJ and Don for um, their preparation and help in, um, pre in carrying out this this webinar as well as their inspiration for the the service that they and their clubs are performing. Our next webinar is coming up next Tuesday and that is a motivation, a elective for the master's program and you can register for that course if you have not already at lionsuniversity.org. And most importantly, don't forget to go and take the quiz. Uh, when you go to the course page, again, just mark as completed at the bottom of the page and advance to the quiz. So with that, I uh, would like to thank all of you for your participation. Hope that we're able to continue that conversation and remind you um, that as you leave the webinar to please go to your control panel um, and under file select exit webinar so uh, that we know we don't have to we don't have any stragglers on the webinar and we hope you have a a great rest of your day